There is much to admire about the life that Jesus demonstrated while he was on earth. Perhaps nothing is more impressive than this truth. The Bible says that Jesus knew what was in man, so it was surely not a shock to him when his own people gave him up for execution. No matter how much love and grace he showed, when their needs weren't met, they were willing to give him up to the worst form of punishment and death. And yet, Jesus was willing to suffer crucifixion to provide atonement for everyone who believes in him. It's a measure of his love and a reflection of the heart of God. It's remarkable that he didn't say to the Father, Get rid of them and let's start again. We'll create a whole new race of people. But that's Jesus. He is the Son of God. However, there are also two examples in the Bible of men who said they would be willing to be lost for the sake of their brethren. The first example is Moses. The Lord was so angry with Israel at Mount Sinai that he was ready to wipe them out and start again with Moses as the seed for a new generation of Israel. But Moses pleaded, Forgive them, Lord, or blot me out of your book. The Israelites in the wilderness were a great trial for Moses. But the Lord brought Moses to the place where he was willing to sacrifice himself for his own people. And the Apostle Paul said that he would be willing to give up his own salvation for the sake of his people, the Jews. Moses and Paul were accepted because of their faith, but there were also men who grew from a simple relationship based on belief to a deep trust in God. Faith grows. Faith is refined. Faith is tested and purified. This is what is on view in Psalm 125. We are working our way through the Psalms of Ascent. Psalm 125 is the sixth of 15 Psalms of Ascent. It reflects the truth that we are secure in faith in Christ Jesus, and because of this acceptance, God is at work to change us and perfect us. Here is Psalm 125, a translation closely following the Hebrew text. Song of the Ascents The ones trusting in the Lord are like Mount Zion, not to be moved, unto eternity it is established. Jerusalem, mountains surround her, and the Lord surrounds his people from this time and forever. Because the scepter of wickedness will not rest upon the portion of the righteous, for the sake of the righteous he will not send injustice in their hands. Do good, Lord, to those who are good and have uprightness in their hearts. And the ones who turn to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with the workers of iniquity. Peace upon Israel. Here it is in the Hebrew. Shir Hamaalot, Habotchimba Adonai Kahar Zion, Lo Yimot, Le Olam Yeshev. Yerushalayim Harim Savivla, Va Adonai Savivla Amo, Me Atave Adolam. Kilo Yanuach Shevet Haresha, Al Goral Hatsadikim. Le Maan Lo Yishlechu Hatsadikim. Be'avlata yedehem. Hetiva Adonai latuvim. Velisharim belibotam. Vehamatim akalkalotam yolichem Adonai et pohle aaven. Shalom al Yisrael. Verse 1. Shir Hamaalot, Song of the Ascents. If we treat all 15 Psalms of Ascent as one, there are 101 verses in total. The verse we are looking at now is the 37th verse in that order. The ones trusting in the Lord 
are like Mount Zion, not to be moved. Habotchim ba'adonai kehar tzion, lo yimot. The ones trusting in the Lord, habotchim ba'adonai. There are 53 references to the Lord in all 15 Psalms of Ascent. This reference is the 18th reference to the Lord. It is the only reference in the Psalms of Ascent which says Ba'adonai, meaning in the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. And the New Testament tells us time and again that we who believe are in Christ, in Him. The previous verse in the Psalms of Ascent was the last verse of Psalm 124, which said, Our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heavens and earth. It's a verse that identifies the Lord as the creator of heavens and earth. Jesus is the creator. The verse says that our help is in his name, the name of Jesus. And then, in the next verse, the first verse of Psalm 125, which we've now come to, it talks about those trusting in the Lord. The root of the Hebrew word is batach, which means trust, rely on. The Hebrew word for believe or be faithful is aman. And from this root comes the word emuna, which means faithfulness. In Hebrew, there is a separate word for trust and reliance. The word on view in verse 1 is habotchim. The root is batach. Habotchim, the ones trusting in the Lord. In the Greek of the New Testament, the word for faith is pistis. The primary meaning of pistis is firm persuasion. Pistis also carries the idea of trust. However, in Hebrew there are two separate words for believe and for trust. I think there's a progression on view, moving from persuasion and acceptance to reliance. There are many symbols in the Bible where material things are pictures of spiritual matters. Silver is one and gold is another. Silver speaks of redemption, and gold speaks of faith. There is only one word for silver in the Hebrew, kesef, because there is only one redemption that reconciles us with God. Jesus redeemed us. In the Hebrew of the Old Testament, the word for gold is zahav, but the Old Testament also speaks of pure gold and hammered gold. Gold is refined to different levels of purity, and faith is tested and refined. Habotchim ba'adonai kehar the ones trusting in the Lord are like Mount Zion, lo yimot, not to be moved, le'olam yeshev, unto eternity it is established. This is the first mention of Mount Zion in the Psalms of Ascent. In Psalm 128 verse 5, and again in Psalm 134 verse 3, we learn that the Lord dwells in Mount Zion. Jesus dwells in the hearts of those who believe in him. The mountains of Jerusalem are real, but the mountains of Jerusalem are also symbols. The mountains of Jerusalem don't look impressive, but a day is coming when all other mountains will be laid low and the mountain of the Lord's temple will become the chief of all mountains. Mount Zion is a symbol of people of faith who have matured in that faith. And the Lord has a promise for those people. They will not be moved. They are secure in Him for eternity. Verse 2, Yerushalayim harim savivla, Jerusalem, mountains surround her. Va'adonai saviv le'amo me'ata ve'adolam. And the Lord surrounds his people from this time and forever. 
The New Testament says we are in Jesus, and he is in us. Verse 3. Ki lo yanuach shevet haresha al goral hatzadikim. Because the scepter of wickedness will not rest upon the portion of the righteous. Righteousness is by faith in Christ Jesus. Believers in Jesus have an inheritance in eternity, an inheritance that cannot be lost. But one day judgment will come upon those who have not had faith and who have walked in wickedness. Lema'an lo yishlechu hatzadikim be'avlata yedehem. For the sake of the righteous, you will not send injustice in their hands. Jesus is able to direct our actions towards good and not evil. The power of God is at work in the lives of those who have faith in Jesus, and he cleans up our lives. Day by day, we may not see what the Lord is doing, but as we look back over a year, five years, ten years, we see what he has done in our lives. Verse 4. Hetiva Adonai Latuvim. Do good, Lord, to those who are good. Velisharim Belibotam. And have uprightness in their hearts. Faith is not fatalism. In this verse, there is an appeal for the Lord to do good for those who are behaving with the goodness that comes from a changed heart. Verse 5. And the ones who turn to their crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with the workers of iniquity. And the final phrase, Shalom al Yisrael, peace upon Israel. When the Lord has taken out those who have no faith in Jesus, then peace will come upon Israel. And I dare say, peace will come to the earth.